Oh, welcome to this presentation. My name is Martin Jones and I'm the area sales manager here at the company Heule in Balgach. And today we are going to be looking at the marriage of two quite completely separate worlds. On one side, we have the mechanical machining process in a machining center. On the other side, we have the digital integration of real-time monitoring in order to recognize real-time problems which can occur during machining. Before we go into that in too much detail, uh, first a little bit of information about the company Heule. As mentioned, we are based in Balkach in Switzerland. This is our headquarters. We service our customers worldwide, partially through a network of 100% uh, owned daughter companies. So we have one in America, in Germany, in China, and in South Korea. And then on the other hand, we also use the services of an exclusive um, and highly trained partner network. The goal of this network is to bring the expertise and the know-how right to the customer worldwide, anytime. Very, very often the customers will come to us and they will tell us that in the design stage that not enough attention is made to how the operations will take place on the shop floor. And for this, I'd like to show you a short example. I brought with me a 3D model of a pump, quite a simple pump. Uh, this is a screw spindle pump for pumping uh, fluids. So here is the workings of the pump. Then we have a suction side, we have a discharge side. And so this would be the flow of fluid through the pump. It's extremely important that these flange surfaces are flat. Otherwise, it's possible that I do not get a correct seal. And it's important that both of these flanges are hermetically sealed when they are connected to the pipes so that one, no air can get into the pump, which could cause damage. But second, that no fluids can leak out of the pump. So in order to, to help us with this, it's important that the bolts and the, the nuts which we are using to fix the flanges of the pipe and the pump together, that the surfaces that these nuts sit on are flat. So what I need to do is on the back faces of this flange, I need to make a back spot face with some kind of machine tool in order to ensure that it's perfectly flat so that I get exactly the same and the correct amount of tightening pressure all around the flange. Once we get to the shop floor, it, it then raises the question, okay, but how do I do this? I cannot get in from this side because the pump body is in the way. The only option that I have is to machine from this side. So very often, as I say, customers would tell us that uh, the design on paper is not so easy to achieve on the shop floor. And this is where Heule comes in and offers the consultation support to the customer for finding exactly the right tool to do the job. In this case, we're looking at the backspot facing tool, which would be the BSF backspot face tool from the company Heule. We would specify the correct size, the correct parameters for the tool, and then we would do testing together with the customer on the shop floor. So the BSF, as I mentioned, stands for back spot facing. It is a tool which is very, very simple to use. We can go down to a bore diameter of six millimeters, producing a counter bore diameter, 2.3 times diameter. The maximum bore size would be 21 millimeters. We work with internal coolant directly at the blade. However, the internal coolant also has another function, which I will reveal shortly. We use coated sintercarbide blades, which are easily replaceable and can be coated according to the materials that we are cutting. As this tool is a back spot facing tool, if you look at this picture, you will see the tool in operation. You may ask the question, well, hang on, how does the blade move in and out at the right time so it does not collide with the workpiece? For this, we need to take a look inside the tool. Here I have the tool body. 
then I have the blade housing and the blade itself. It's important with this tool, the BSF, we need to use internal coolant on the machine. The coolant will flow down through the tool. And on one side, it will go down this channel here directly to the blade. But the coolant also has a second function, a very important function. The pressure of the coolant here will press this piston down onto the connecting rod. The connecting rod pushes down on the blade and the blade will fold back into the tool. So whenever we pass the tool through the workpiece, we switch on the internal coolant and the blade is then folded into the tool. In order to see this a little more clearly, I'd like to show you a short video. So in this case, because it's a video we are and we want to show you how it works, we're using compressed air and not coolant. So here the tool is down through the hole. We've started the rotation. Uh, centrifugal force will make the blade come out of the tool, and then we start to cut. Once we're done, we move down, switch on the internal coolant, the blade folds in, and then we can extract the tool from the workpiece. The relationship between bore and counterbore diameter is 2.3, as we just saw. Let's look at this animation and you can see the sequence perfectly. We switch on the coolant, the blade folds in. Switch off the coolant, start the spindle and centrifugal force will make the blade fold out of the tool. We then move up to the workpiece and prepare for cutting. We cut until we have a full cut, allowing for any uneven surface. Then we switch on the coolant. Once I've cut to depth, coolant off, move down, switch the coolant back on, the blade folds into the tool, then I can extract the tool from the workpiece. This video you can also see on our homepage, www.hoyle.com, and it gives a very, very clear picture as to the operation of the BSF tool. So with the video, we've just seen the correct operation of the BSF tool and the correct procedure for the tool entering and being extracted from the workpiece. But what happens if the customer will try to extract the tool from the workpiece, but the blade has not folded into the tool? Then we are looking at potentially very expensive damage to the workpiece and, of course, the tool itself. The customer that we did the following test with is from the aerospace industry, and they wanted to have a real-time digital monitoring of the back spot facing tool to ensure that the tool is always in the correct position, that the blade is always in the correct position while entering and being removed from the workpiece. In order to achieve this, we now need to bring in another member to our circle of consultation, namely a manufacturer of such a digital monitoring solution. Who takes over what responsibility in this circle of consultation? Of course, Hoyle is responsible for the correct tools for the job for the back spot facing. And then with the digital monitoring specialist, they would discuss things like what forces are generated during this process, which they can monitor, how this monitoring will be integrated into the tool, into the machine, how to get the information out of the machine, and then what to do with the information once we have it. All of this then is done together between the customer and the consultation provider. So how does such a solution look? Well, what we would use is a special tool holder, which will be specified by the company Promicron, here using their Spike mobile system. The tool holder is equipped with a sensor array which can measure various forces. The BSF tool is then fitted into this tool holder. Here we see, for example, forces acting on the BSF tool during the cutting process, and these forces would then be uh, monitored by the system. The main force which would be acting on the BSF is a deflection force. And quite simply, if there is no bending moments being registered, then the blade is folded incorrectly. If the blade is out and they try to remove the tool, then the deflection force will be very high. The system will recognize this and hopefully the machine would stop. 
how does this look if we go into a bit more detail? So step one, the tool passes through the workpiece. The, uh, the internal coolant is switched on, which the system will recognize. I will show you this uh, in a later graph. However, the spindle is not rotating. There's no cutting taking place. So the forces acting on the tool are minimal. Then I start the spindle. I start with the activation speed. And this is the speed which we need for the blade to fold out of the tool, which is caused by the centrifugal force. But still no high cutting forces or things like this here acting on the tool. The next step is where we move up with the tool and we start to cut. Uh, we have the internal coolant uh, on, which will be lubricating the system, flushing away the, uh, the swarf, the chippings, the contamination. And here we see now the forces are very, very high. Then once we are done with the cutting, uh, the spindle will be stopped. The only thing I have on now is internal coolant to be sure that the blade is inside the tool. And then I will extract the tool from the workpiece. And in this case, this is exactly what the customer wants to see. What the customer doesn't want to see is something like this, where the system will try to extract the tool out of the workpiece with the blade still folded out. This will result in destruction of the tool and of course, a very expensive workpiece. So let's take a look at the BSF tool in operation and how the forces which are generated by the BSF tool are recorded and graphically represented on the screen. So here we see on the right hand side, uh, we see the a representation of the three forces which we are working with. One is tension compression on the tool, one is torsion and the other is deflection. And as the BSF tool goes through the process of going into the workpiece, starting the spindle, internal coolant, switching on, cutting, you see the effect of the forces in the graphical representation on the right hand of the screen. So what we see now is a complete visualization of the BSF backspot facing process. Looks a little complicated at first glance, but if we break it up, we see three individual lines, each one representing a different force which is acting on the tool. One, we have the compression and the tension force in blue. In red, we have the torsional forces which are acting on the tool. And in green, the deflection. Let's break up this slide into its various component parts and take a look at it in more detail. So in the beginning, we have a stationary spindle. We have no internal or external coolant. We're simply traversing through the workpiece. So we get a picture that looks like this. We do not see much variation whatsoever. Once we then activate the spindle and we activate the internal coolant, then we start to see some action on our visualization. The next steps would be folding out of the blade, speed activated. So we're now running at approximately 3000 revolutions a minute so that we can generate the centrifugal force for folding out the blade. The internal coolant is deactivated at this point. Once the blade has come out of the tool and we are ready for the cutting, we can then reduce the speed of the spindle down to the working speed, which would be 1000, in this case, 1150 revolutions a minute. So moving on then to the next process steps, we first of all, we start to cut our back spot face without internal coolant. In this case, it was to a depth of 0 0.42 millimeters. The reason why we do this is to make an initial cut until we have a full cut. This will allow for any unevenness in the surface of the component that we are machining. Then we can switch on the internal coolant and we can machine down to the full depth of the required back spot face. Here we see very, very clearly on the graph where the internal and external coolant, uh, where they are switched on, uh, respectively switched off here. 
So once we have this complete picture, this is how it would look. And what do we uh, use this information for? Well, this is actually teaching the system what is a, uh, a good backspot face machining process. What is acceptable? Where do the tolerances lie? And when does the system need to react when something is not going according to plan? In addition to teaching the system what is a correct backspot facing or counter boring process, we also tell the system what is not acceptable. And we provoke this by simulating, um, by simulating sporadic errors which could potentially occur during the production. In this case, for example, trying to remove the tool from the workpiece with the blade folded out. Uh, this, so trying to do this would give you a graph or um, a result in the digitalization, which looks like this. And so the system will learn what is a sporadic error and it will then react accordingly by switching off the machine immediately. And this will, of course, then eliminate um, a damage to expensive workpieces and, of course, the tooling. What can we take away then from, uh, from this presentation? Contacting Hoyle, we will give you the correct tool for the backspot facing job and we will also inform you as soon as it needs any addition uh, to the consultation circle where we would then advise you to bring in a specialist, in this case in the form of digital monitoring system providers such as the company Promicron. Uh, a live monitoring of the system will lower the process time, complete process time. Other process will be eliminated completely, such as the secondary monitoring of quality, so checking each and every workpiece. Uh, we offer a very transparent and very open communication, which is necessary to define the right solution. Hoyle needs to have all of the information from you so that we can provide you with the right tool. Promicron, on the other hand, need all of the information about the Hoyle tools and your requests for the process in order to give you the right solution. It's a win-win situation for everybody. And this is what we want to achieve, that you and also your customer, the end user, are happy with the results. We thank you for uh, your, uh, your attention during this presentation. We hope it was interesting for you. We've tried to keep this quite complicated subject, this marriage of mechanical deburring or backspot facing processes with digital monitoring to a minimum to give you an idea of what's possible. If you want, however, further detailed information, then you can go to our homepage, www.hoyle.com for further information. The videos you can also see on our website or on our YouTube channel, where you can please contact us directly at info at hoyle.com. We look forward to hearing from you. Until then, uh, we wish you great success. See you next time. Bye-bye.